In the middle of the 20th century, the world saw the rise, growth, and fall of one of the worst governments in history, Nazi Germany. The Rise and Fall of the Third Reich, a huge book by William L. Shire, tells the story of this dark time. Shire brings the story of Adolf Hitler's rise to power, his reign of terror, and the fall of the Third Reich to life through careful study and his own experiences as a foreign correspondent in Berlin during the early years of Hitler's rule. The first part of the book explains where Hitler's ideas came from and what was going on in Germany's politics after World War I. Shire paints a clear picture of how Hitler rose to power in the Nazi Party, or National Socialist German Workers' Party. We see how good he is at public speaking, how he mesmerizes the masses, and how he uses political ties to his advantage. Hitler's charisma, mixed with Germany's poor economy and unstable government at the time, lets him play on the fears and anger of the German people. This makes it possible for him to become chancellor in 1933. As Hitler gets stronger, Shire looks at the main ideas that make up the philosophy of the Third Reich. Hitler's plan is based on the idea of racial purity and Aryan power, which gives him a reason to persecute and kill millions of Jews and other people from marginalized groups. Shire looks at Hitler's twisted ideas about Lebensraum, which means living space. These ideas fuel Hitler's territorial ambitions and lead to the invasion of nearby countries. The story goes into the worst parts of Nazi Germany's past, such as the horrors of the Holocaust. Shire talks about how the Jews were treated like animals, sent to prison camps, and the final solution was put into place. Shire shows how big the horrible things that happened during this time were by using horrifying stories and careful documentation. Throughout the book, there are references to important people who played important parts in the rise and fall of the Third Reich. We see how cruel Heinrich Himmler was. He was the leader of the SS and was in charge of setting up and running the death camps. The Minister of Propaganda, Joseph Goebbels, is shown to be a master operator who used media and mass communication to spread Nazi ideas and control public opinion. Hermann Göring, Hitler's second-in-command and a charismatic person, is a good example of the military and political elite who helped and backed Hitler's plans. As the book goes on, important things happened that changed the course of Nazi Germany. The attack of Poland in 1939 is the start of World War II, and Hitler's later victories in Europe, such as in France and the Low Countries, show how strong the Third Reich's army was. The turning point of the war, the Battle of Stalingrad, shows how limited Hitler's military plan was and how determined the Soviet Union was to stop Nazi aggression. Shire looks at the idea of collusion and the moral problems that people and countries faced during this time. He looks at how German organizations, like the military and the court system, helped keep the Nazi regime in power. He also talks about how the rest of the world reacted and asks if more could have been done to stop the horrible things Hitler's government did. The rise and fall of the Third Reich is a stark warning of the dangers of unchecked authoritarianism and the results of hate-filled ideologies. It shows how important it is to stay alert and stay away from people who try to use fear and division to get what they want. Shire's work not only teaches by analyzing history and telling personal stories, but it also pays solemn respect to the millions of people who suffered and died under the cruel rule of the Third Reich. As we close the book on Nazi Germany, we have a deep understanding of how one of the most evil regimes in history rose to power and fell. Shire's masterpiece captures the complexity and horror of this dark time, telling us of the need to learn from the past and work for a future free from the dangers of extremism and hatred.